Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery. This will be part 270. And we're <clears throat> discussing today the destiny of organized religions. How do we define organized religion? Organized religion exists basically in the form of denominational, <coughs> systematic, um, spiritual <coughs> comprehension of God, the things of God, and the ways of God. Organized religion is systematic <coughs> in its function. It has a system in which it operates. It has principles in which it promulgates to those that are connected to it. And <clears throat> we take a look at the principles and the way that organized religion functions today and compare it with what the scripture says. The church has been established to experience <clears throat> and to prepare for, we see <clears throat> very little similarity. And the teachings of organized religion <coughs> are <coughs> at best at best very very shallow and simplistic as compared to biblical instruction biblical teaching and <coughs> one of the reasons why Christians are not fully committed is because they're following the tenets of organized religion in that discipleship of Jesus Christ. Mm. Isn't it curious that all of these leaders and followers of the various denominations who say ours is the true church, ours is the true denomination, don't actually compare the true church of the original church with their own structure today. That's right. So how then do they determine themselves as being the true church? By their own uh, priority system. Nonsense, in other words. Yeah. yeah. All right. On a similar note, Mr. Jones, I'm thinking about the Islamic religion and their, their praying rituals that they do, the five different prayers during the day. Do they have a study? Do they study the Quran? Sure. Or whatever they do. Sure. Okay. Because see, you know, I'm, I'm just interested <coughs> because of the, the lack of commitment that Christians have to study. Mm. And then you see these other religions where they're, they're so staunch, they bring them up to study, 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 and, and uh, we're praying and all this stuff. And it's not known from, from the Christian perspective, it's from the Islamic. The you know? membership of other religions are far more committed to their religions than Christians are to Christianity. Mm. Muslims are more fa far more faithful to following the tenets of their religion. Most Christians don't even know what the principles of Christianity are. They're still trying to deci decipher whether or not they're saved. Because they can't define what salvation is. <clears throat> Again, it's a um, an indictment against the teaching of organized religion. We want to take a look here at the destiny <coughs> of organized religion. <coughs> <coughs> Scripture teaches by the time of the beginning of sorrows the church denominations will be overrun by corrupt teachers and authority figures who will bring judgment upon themselves. So what we're, what we're witnessing now is a <clears throat> progression away from even acquiescing the truths of the scripture on the part of organized religion. <coughs> the denominations are teaching you don't have to adhere strictly to what the scripture is saying. It's open to interpretation. Nowhere do you find the scripture giving that principle. Denominations are teaching more and more and more about <coughs> compromising the things that they have been teaching before. Because the church has to keep up with 
the progression of <clears throat> the world. You know, the best example I've seen of what you've just said is the Pope telling the faithful that it's dangerous to pursue a relationship, a direct relationship with Jesus Christ, but instead do it through him. So, I don't know how many, but two something billion of these people, they know, yes, it's, you know, they agree. They haven't read yes. a, a thing. They don't yes. know anything, yes. but they all nod their heads in agreement. <clears throat> yes. Yes, that's a, that's where they get their strength from. Mm. Yes. Okay, Mr. Jones, this is not with our study, but I'm going to ask this question. There's a scripture. If you've got faith of a mustard seed, you can say unto this mountain, be thou removed. Mm. And, and so, <coughs> is he talking about a government? Is he talking about a, a physical mountain? Physical mountain. Okay, so now, <coughs> we don't see anywhere in Scripture where anybody's done that. A physical mountain. Because literally, there might be people living on the mountain, for all you know. You know, if you say this mountain, it's in, it's in your way, you know, move it. I mean, why would somebody want to move a mountain? Because a mountain would be considered an obstacle to what they are attempting to do. We know that one man through faith causes the sun to st stand still. So moving a mountain compared to that would be much less. Nobody died. The weather patterns didn't shift on the earth. But the sun stood still over Mount, uh, I think it was uh, Mount Geboa. When Jesus is talking about faith, he's talking about the gift of faith. You can do anything. He says so. Nothing is impossible to you. <clears throat> this is an indication of the difference between what people think today and what is taught in the Scripture. Yes. <coughs> the Scripture, particularly the New Covenant Scripture, is designed to prepare the saint for life in the heavens. That's why it's called the gospel of the kingdom of the heavens. Organized religion doesn't even recognize that principle. It centers everything on the earth. <coughs> it makes everything else about eternity nebulous. <coughs> the kingdom of God is focused on eternity and the things of earth are secondary. Yes. <coughs> so can anything on earth or even is is life in the heavens so dramatically different than life on earth there there's there is, there will be no remnant of anything any kind of life on earth in the heavens the way of life in the heavens is radically different than the way of life on earth the way of life on earth is restricted, it is limited, it is temporary. Life in the heavens <coughs> that the born-again saint is destined to enter into is eternal, <coughs> expansive, unlimited, and uh, <coughs> never, never, never changing. Life on earth is always, always, always changing. So you have diametrical opposites conditions which the scripture will give the saint understanding of so that the saint can compare him, prepare himself for leaving <coughs> this abode and entering into his destiny in the heavens. Organized religion does not prepare the saint for that. Yeah. But let's go on. <coughs> second Peter, second chapter, verse one. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves <clears throat> the false teachers swift destruction. 
<coughs> this is the destiny of organized religion. This is what <coughs> the apostles, <coughs> under the aegis of the revelation of the Holy Spirit, <coughs> saw organized religion uh, entering into destruction. Why? Because they did not follow the mandate in which they were instructed to follow, which we will touch upon a little later. What we want to take a look at now <coughs> is <coughs> what is being spoken about here. <coughs> the leadership of organized religion, as we continue further in this description, is going to be to the detriment, the detriment of those that are under their authority. Verse 2. <clears throat> many, 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 many shall follow their pernicious ways, destructive ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they, the leadership, with vain words, make merchandise of you, whose judgment now is of a long time, lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. So it's consistently talking about judgment going to fall on the leadership of <coughs> organized religion. It's also talking about the wretched state that those that sit under their authority is going to be reached. Hmm. Turn to Matthew 24. Verses uh, 4 and 5. <clears throat> and Jesus answered <clears throat> and said unto them, Take heed, take heed, take heed that no man deceive you. Deception is going to be rampant in organized religion. Verse 5, For many, many shall come in my name, saying I am Christ, and shall deceive many. That is the situation of organized religion today. Christians are sitting under deceptive teaching. Excuse me? Then, uh, the, the, what would you call... Um, the, the, the little groups like um, Jones Town when they got all oh. drank poison <coughs> cults cults Cult. okay <coughs> that's not organized religion it's <coughs> organized, organized religion teaches a certain amount of truth cults are steeped in radical doctrine okay very little <laughs> truth. Jim Jones knew scripture. He could quote it or misquote it. <laughs> yeah, well, Jim Jones was an Assembly of God preacher one day, one time. That's so bad. Yeah. That's so bad. Yeah, he, he was orthodox at one time. Mm. He went into a cultish <clears throat> mentality and took 900 people in eternity. <clears throat> because of him, many people who are unsaved believe that Assemblies itself is a cult. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> because assemblies <coughs> basically believes in the gifts. Mm -hmm. It believes in the retention of <coughs> the ministry offices that the Holy Spirit will impart. Mainline denominations don't believe that. They believe that's all passed away. So you have, <laughs> you know, you're probably calling the kettle black here. <coughs> All of it is a state of distortion 
if you will. But when you say assemblies believes that, they just pay lip service to it. Sure. Because if they did, they would actually yeah, they'd be fu functioning, in, officers, functioning in it. But uh, I give <clears throat> them credit, at least they acknowledge that it still is <clears throat> in vogue. Mm. That's far better than mainline denominations. Right. That you you sit in the in the mainline denomination, you're not going to get the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You're not going to get the spirit of wisdom and revelation. You're not going to get the spirit of prophecy. You're going to wind up crippled. At least in the Pentecostal surrounding, yes. you have a greater chance of uh, manipulating mm. where you need to go. <clears throat> now, why? What is the fault of mainline denominations? What is it that is so egregious? We're going to take a look at a couple of principles that mainline denominations are going to go into judgment for. Mm. Prophet. Scripture teaches God's judgment will fall on church leaders for several reasons. The first reason is false teaching. Turn to Galatians, the first chapter, verses 8 to 9. Galatians, the first chapter, <clears throat> verses 8 to 9. <clears throat> but though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preaches any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. The word accursed there is <coughs> comes from a Greek term anathema. <coughs> <coughs> Which means bound with a great curse. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Though we are an angel from heaven, mm -hmm. preach. So what angel from heaven is going to be preaching? Revelation uh, 10th chapter. An angel preaches the gospel, the everlasting gospel. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> You're going to have false Luciferians preaching a false gospel, as well as humans. <clears throat> now we want to take a look at this. Is there any mainline denomination that preaches or teaches a false gospel? Did you say, is there any? Yes. That teaches a false gospel? Yes. All of them. Well, to a certain degree, but not full false gospel. Okay. That's the truth. The main, great mainline group that uh, teaches a false gospel are the Catholics. Yes. They have rearranged salvation in such a way that <clears throat> what they teach, which is flies in the face of what the scripture teaches, <clears throat> is that the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus is not sufficient to save you. No. Okay. The blood is not sufficient to save you. You need the sacraments. Mm. As basically centered around the Mass. Doesn't uh, Mother Mary also have to petition intercedingly on your behalf? If you sin. Okay. I'm talking about for the salvation. Do they uh, teach that? <clears throat> Doesn't she have a part in this? Uh, well, it depends on what group you're looking at okay. or you're talking to. But if you if you participate in Mass, you won't need Mother Mary. Right. Because every time you take the cup, she, you're being saved yeah. again. You're drinking the, the, the wine and eating the flesh and you're, you're good. So the salvation lasts for a month, in other words. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Plus, they teach works. You're not saved by faith. You're saved by <coughs> consecrated um, 
works of <clears throat> goodness that uh, enable you to uh, stay in the good graces of the church. Each time we get together and we study more and of course learn more, the state of the world looks worse, <laughs> like really bad. Yes, you got a billion people that have been believing that for a thousand years. Mm. Anyway, <clears throat> that's one, teaching a false gospel. <clears throat> What's an <clears throat> another? <clears throat> Failure to preach all the gospel of the kingdom. Turn to Acts 20, verse And now, behold, I know that you all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, shall see my face no more. Wherefore, I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men. Now, Paul, you put these two scriptures together. Paul is saying, if you don't preach the kingdom of God, you're going to be guilty of the blood of the people that you have preached to. He goes on to say, <clears throat> For, for, I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Mainline denominations do not teach all the counsel of God. So, <clears throat> else's question. Since the early apostles, in other words, not Paul, found Paul's gospel difficult to understand, would you say that they taught the whole council of God? No. <clears throat> no. <clears throat> Number one, Jesus told them, you take the gospel to every creature. Mm. Paul's the only one, Paul, Silas, okay. Apollos, Apollos, they took the gospel to the Gentiles. So <clears throat> the other apostles were guilty of <clears throat> centralizing and limiting the spread of the gospel to, to Jews, Jews only. But did they teach the whole council to the Jews? No, mm -hmm. they didn't because they would need Paul's gospel to right, have exactly. the whole okay. council of okay. uh, being taught. Well, that's something that the church has no concept of. No, you just said. not at all. <clears throat> not at all. The, Paul, the, 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 the church doesn't teach the gospel of the kingdom of God. The church teaches the gospel of salvation. salvation. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> and how can it be laid to their charge if they don't know it, how are they supposed to teach it? They knew it was available, they shunned it. Just like they shunned Paul. <coughs> they didn't have anything to do with Paul. Paul talks about it in Galatians. I went, I presented my gospel to them, I <coughs> presented myself to them, and um, you know, they looked down their nose and they didn't even accept him as an apostle. So he went to the Gentiles. It was God, supernatural move of God, that told him to go back there and it presented his credentials again, bringing the church with him and showing the signs and wonders and miracles. Mm. That's when he says they gave me the, left, the, front, the right hand of fellowship. Mm. Well, <clears throat> if they fail to teach the whole counsel of God, what is mainline denomination exactly. doing? Exactly. It is basically crippling the body of Christ. Because number one, it doesn't recognize the main offices of the body of Christ. <coughs> the main offices of the body of Christ are <coughs> apostles, prophets, teachers. But you're going to get the cry, well, it's not our fault because the early church fathers didn't do it, except for Paul, of course. And so therefore, how could you be expected to? <coughs> because they have the scriptures. I know, but you know what they've been, that's what they're going to say. They can say it, yeah. but they can't, they, nobody's going to accept it because they have the same scriptures. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Plus, the mainline offices of the church have been systematically eliminated. Yes. Systematically eliminated. Why? Why is that? Well, they came up with this concoction. They're not needed anymore. Mm. <clears throat> and uh, they go to a scripture <clears throat> which they interpret to mean 
you, you, you see, you don't need apostles and prophets anymore because <coughs> now you have the full canon of Scripture. And the Scripture they go to, of course, is when that perfect has come, and then you won't need prophecy, you won't need tongues, they'll all cease. So to define the perfect as being the whole count, the whole volume of the of the books of the of the gospel. Mm. It's misinterpretation. The perfect is talking about the Lord Jesus. When he returns, you won't need prophecies, tongues, or anything else, because God Himself will be here. Yeah. <coughs> I learned that. Since an incredibly small percentage of people know that successively with each reprinting and imprint the Bible is changing the words are literally changing I made a chart of all the different places where they're changed so we're now seeing that people are, are uh, moved moved encouraged to start with the NIV and end with the NIV so therefore they don't even know what you've just said you know that uh, right. the, the the Bible itself is changing yep. so from that perspective <coughs> they'll never know that they had the whole scripture no unless they search mm. yes the Strong's have an NIV uh, edition doesn't need one. I was looking at my original Strong's and comparing it to the latest edition of Strong's. Mm -hmm. They got words in there <coughs> that are, are, are changed. They got different uh, shortening of different things. <coughs> People look at that and they say, "Well, these are biblical scholars, so they can't be wrong." Sure. You know. Sure. So there's a, an insidious move <coughs> to limit. The Word of God, the truth of God. So is there different publishers of the Strong's Concordance? No, there's one publisher. It's on the van. But they are changing each impression. So each year or two years they come out with a new imprint, is what they call it. Yeah. An update, in other words. Supposedly better quality right. than... They take out what used to be there five years ago. When I first started um, studying with uh, Richard Buduti, <coughs> you had the old strong. I remember seeing it. You know, really battered, heavily taped. I and still everything. have it. Yeah. yeah. Praise the Lord. Don't let go of that. Well, well, no, no. I fact, I might take no. it off you. And take <laughs> a few copies. Anyway, yes. he, we would we would study. He would tell us the words in the in that specific version of the Strongs. I've had two, possibly three, different strong electronic and, and paper. I can't find anything that he told me. Not not a single word matches. So you see, over a period of time, the largest publisher of the planet of anything. Uh, biblical. It's called Zondervan. They're the largest publisher on the planet full stop. They own everything. So when you're in that position, you can change anything you like, no one can tell you anything, and no one will know because they didn't have the original. So is there a year specific that you're looking for? Well, look at what, what year was yours printed? I'd have to look it up, but it's... You're, you're looking for the Strong's um, printed before 1800. That was around the time that I think the one that you've got is. Yeah. Anything in 1900 or after is a waste of time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, they've whitewashed so much. That it, you look at the word north. Mm. The old strong says it's <coughs> it's uh, <coughs> pronounced sophoni. Okay. Means that which is hidden. hidden. Yes, I remember that. This one. It's just giving you, well, this is north, direction, direction north. Yeah, yeah, the opposite of south. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's all watered down, and it's, it's, it's not an accident. They are systematically trying to eliminate the truth of God's word and limit it in what it's initially proposing, what it's initially declaring. Right. Or slow down those who actually study. Yes. But I've got to tell you that there's something I like about that because it demands from the Father's uh, instruction in the first place that we literally crawl over glass to get this knowledge, that we, yeah. we, we yeah. struggle with it so much yes. that we, you know, we spend hours looking for this stuff. <coughs> and unless the person's prepared to do that, evidently, they're not worthy. Otherwise, he wouldn't have allowed it to that degree, would it? Exactly. 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 So we find, let's continue on, we're in Acts 20. Paul, this is in Paul's time, talking to the church leaders, the elders, the church of Ephesus. I'm going to pick it up, verse 28, Acts 20. 
Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. So he warns the leadership. You feed them the whole counsel of God. You don't leave anything out. Otherwise, their blood is going to be on your head. <clears throat> now, if you look at mainline denominations and the leadership, <clears throat> they're under judgment <clears throat> because they <clears throat> restrict and limit. You're going to read, <clears throat> read a sermon to a group of people and then speak a couple of things about <clears throat> the here and the now of Christianity, how you can be successful, yeah. how you can receive this, how you can have that, and uh, you have to apply yourself. And then you leave out the eternal eternality of the Word of God. That person's blood is on the hands of that person who stood there and gave them that. <clears throat> uh, uh, Joe Osteen. I was going to say Brother Black. But <laughs> <laughs> Joe Osteen. I was looking at this thing the other day. We were asking him, uh, how come you don't teach about sin or hell? Oh, well, I don't, you know, he's, he's trying, to, yeah. trying to uh, um, rationalize mm -hmm. that people get beaten down and they already know. And yep, you don't, you know, sense. he's going to have to stand before God and give an account one day or why he didn't preach the whole counsel of God. See, the, the curious thing is that nobody <coughs> in the church grasps that what you've just described is Luciferian teaching. It's not, it's not yes. biblical teaching. Yes. It's no, but nobody knows that. They think, oh, this is just another style of teaching. Yeah. That's just yeah. extraordinary. Yeah. Yes. And they're willing to sit there and be gobbled down what's being given because it sounds good mm. and then be content to go on about their business. That's why the majority of Christians, if they're saved, go into eternity in total ignorance. Now, how are they going to? How are they going to be given a position in the kingdom if they have no idea? They haven't qualified for anything. Yeah. Yeah. They've just lived and had a you know reasonably good time, and then phew, off they go. Remember what we said: there are two positions in the kingdom of heaven. Kings and priests, two only. <clears throat> if you're living your life on earth, turn to 1 Corinthians, 15th chapter. As I speak, you're living your life on earth, and you don't have the faintest idea of what your calling is. How can you have qualified for one of those two positions? Mm. First Corinthians 15, verse 19. <clears throat> if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. He's talking to Christians, saved people. <clears throat> and telling them, if you don't have an eternal view of your life here, you're going to live your life here miserable. Mm. Why? Because you have no hope, uh, eternal hope. What are you looking forward to? Your life is just consists of the stuff that you know about here. All right, the continuation. <clears throat> now we find another principle. Neutralizing the authority of Scripture. Neutralizing the authority of Scripture. Turn to Mark, 7th chapter, verse 13.
making the word of God of none effect through your tradition mm -hmm. which ye have delivered and many such like things do ye replacing the word of God <coughs> with the works of men well <coughs> mega church <coughs> they have now a position called worship leader yeah ain't in the Bible mm -hmm. uh their services aren't services, they're conferences. Conference Christianity. We have a big conference here dealing with um, uh, how, how great you can become in Christ. 10,000 people show up. You have worship leaders, this, that, and the other. Well, the stuff that they have there with their ecumenical attendance mm -hmm. means absolutely nothing. Should we understand that they look at the worship leader ministry, because that's how they're going to look at it, uh, equal to or on the same level as the original ministry offices? Well, they've devised their own priority systems. Right. I know it's man-made. What I'm asking is, in their minds, do they think, much like the pastor is the CEO of, of, all, of all churches, mm -hmm. do they think this ministry office is on the same level as apostles, evangelists, prophets, so on and so forth? In their system, yeah. yeah. I would assume so, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But they're so reconfigured what God's original design for the church is. There's no... Uh, you can't compare, really. <clears throat> because the main office, the organized religion, is the pastor. Sure. Nothing else. Well, the deacon board. <clears throat> and that's it. So they've invested all authority in one man who has to say so along with the deacon board. No revelation offices whatsoever. Turn to Ephesians, the first chapter. Verse 9. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he had purposed in himself. How did he make it known? For the apostles and prophets. It's the only way he makes it known. <clears throat> Turn to 1 Peter. God operates through the offices that he established. First, apostle. Secondarily, prophets. Bear with me a moment. <coughs> First Peter, first chapter. Verse 8, I'm going to start with, talking about Christ. Whom having not seen your love, in whom though now you see him not, <coughs> not yet, believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable, full of glory. <clears throat> He's talking about the hope that the saint has in ultimately being with his Lord and Savior. Verse 9, Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Searching what? or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ 
and the glory that should follow. <clears throat> unto whom it was revealed, that not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you, by them that have preached the gospel unto you, with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. He said, what is he talking about? He's talking about the New Testament prophets, like Agabus, mm -hmm. who prophesied to the body of Christ the things that the body of Christ was going to suffer, when they were going to suffer it, <clears throat> the time they were going to suffer it. <clears throat> People read this, and I've heard... <clears throat> Authority figure say this is Old Testament prophets. It's not. <coughs> you know what he says here. Uh, <coughs> when he talks about. Okay, receiving them to your service of uh, Verse 11, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, right. did signify this. He's not talking about Christ. Sure. He's talking about the church and how the Spirit of Christ is giving them comprehension through revelation of what the church is going to suffer. <clears throat> God operates through apostles and prophets. The prophets ministered to the apostles, Revelation, because the apostles were busy shepherding the church. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Peter talks about the things of Revelation because he got them from the prophets like Agabus and those that came down from Antioch. And they gave them Revelation and they gave them understanding of the things that were going to take place. <clears throat> Man, our denomination doesn't recognize apostles, prophets, anybody that's anointed because they teach it's all passed away. So that's why we see at the end of the gathering when the Lord sends the elders into their communities, he immediately establishes those others again. Sure. So apostles and prophets. Apostles and prophets are going to be the shepherds of the church in tribulation period. Mm. Now, we're going to see because of this what the destiny of mainline denominations are. Turn to Isaiah 25, I mean, Jeremiah 25, I'm going to read this out of the Hebrew into linear. This is word for word translation into English. <clears throat> this is Jeremiah 25, 34 to 38. Howl, O shepherds, and cry and roll, O leaders of the flock. <clears throat> for the days of your slaughter and of your scatterings <coughs> are fulfilled. And you shall fall like a desirable vessel. <clears throat> and refuge has perished from the shepherds and escaped from the leaders of the flock. And so basically they're trapped. <clears throat> the sound of the shepherds and the howling from the leaders of the flock, for Jehovah is spoiling their pastor. And the peaceful foals are devastated because of the glow of of the anger of Jehovah. <clears throat> like the young lion, he has left his den, <clears throat> for their land is a waste because of the oppressors, the oppressors burning anger, the oppressors are the strangers and the evil of the earth, and because of his, the Lord's, glowing anger. So he's talking about <clears throat> these guys who set themselves up in their little five thumbs, and you can see the movers and shakers of the mega churches that have their mansions and their estates and their cultivated fields and all the rest of it. 
And there's a prophecy saying that all is going to be destroyed. Mm. <coughs> uh, <coughs> it's going to be devastated. It's going to be taken over. And the individuals, <coughs> the leaders, <coughs> and the <coughs> movers and shakers of the flock are all going to be cut off and deposited into the torment regions of hell. Will the leadership live to see that the state's destroyed? Or that's immediately removed? Oh, they're going to see it destroyed. Okay. And then and sent then, to the torment yeah, regions, right. Yeah. Yeah, they're going to be around to uh, panic and uh, be terrified. And it says they have no way to flee. Mm. So <clears throat> they're going to witness the tremendous anger of the Lord as well. And uh, that is because, and I can I can understand, because I get angry I'm just thinking about it. They have the temerity to take the word of God and rearrange it to their own liking, manipulate people through it for their own benefit, and then think <clears throat> that they have the final say so and they're not going to pay any consequences for it. Finally, turn to Jeremiah 23. Verses up. 1 to 3. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Notice what he says, that destroy and scatter. How do they destroy and scatter? <clears throat> through not preaching the whole counsel of God, through perverse uh, 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 twisting of the scripture, <clears throat> through misusing <clears throat> the the congregation for their own means, offending people, uh, not caring about the problems or the afflictions of their people, so people leave out, disheartened, and all the rest, and they go and they wither on the vine. Mm. It's talking about people that are responsible for this kind of thing. Verse 2, Therefore thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people, you have scattered my flock and driven them away. Have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries whither I have driven them, and will bring them again to their foals, and they shall be fruitful and increase. There's a promise of restoration. Before this thing is over, people are going to understand how the body of Christ is actually to function. The offices are going to be reinstated into the body of Christ. Pro uh, apostle, prophet, teacher. All the ministry offices that Paul talked about. <clears throat> miracles, healings, discernment of spirits, tongues. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> everything that God initially put into the body of Christ is going to re again function in the body of Christ. <clears throat> it's going to take place by the time of the gathering. Since this is for public viewing, anyone who comes across this lesson, which we're having tonight, mm -hmm. what do you recommend that they immediately do upon having heard this? Examine themselves to see what their source of <clears throat> scriptural understanding is. Mm -hmm. and then? It's not optional. Their eternity depends on it. And then make the necessary correction. Dedicate themselves to discern the truth, mm. to receive the truth. Because only by knowing the truth will a person be able to survive the tremendous upheavals that are coming on this world. Right. <clears throat> Which start with the judgment. 
So this is this is this is a prerequisite. You better be committed. You better be pursuing the Word of God and understanding and uh, wanting to find out where you fit into this situation. <clears throat> how how does this uh, gonna affect you in eternity? Because when you get there, if you're not prepared for it, you're not gonna receive anything. Yeah.